Hello everybody and welcome to Langer's Legion. I'm Langer and let's talk Star Wars Legion. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about expanding your rebel army. So let's get into it. A few months back, I did a video on getting started in Star Wars Legion, link up here, where I covered the various box sets that one can pick up when starting their journey in Star Wars Legion. And whether you picked up a core set or one of the various Battle Force boxes, each of these sets do have room for expansion and for improvement, which brings us to this video and specifically how you're going to build up your Rebel Army. So whether you purchased um, the Galactic Civil War set or Echo Base Defenders, which really is qu quite honestly the best bang for your buck, let's talk about five follow-up unit expansions for each box set that you might want to look into picking up to build out your 800-point Rebel Army. Now, these are just my thoughts and opinions. I'm just a guy on the internet, so you know, take them for what they're worth and always remember the golden rule. If you think something's cool, go ahead and pick that up because we're here to have fun, right? Let's start with Echo Base Defenders because that one is a bit easier. The Echo Base Defenders box uh, set loads you up with lots of units. You get Princess Leia, you get Chewbacca, you get C-3PO and R2-D2, you get four units of Rebel Vets with the emplacement troopers, two sets of Tauntauns, and one FD cannon. You know, lots and lots of plastic. And again, the best bang for your buck. Now, while this video isn't a deep dive into the actual battle force itself, there are units you're going to want to pick up to augment what comes in the box sets to both, you know, give you a better army as well as just give you a couple of different play styles. And the first unit on the list for Echo Base Defenders is one of the heroes that isn't included in the box set but was definitely on the Battle of Hoth, and that's Han Solo. Now, Han Solo has taken somewhat of a, a hit with the recent point changes, but he's still a really good unit to pick up, again, to expand on what you might have already gotten in Echo Base Defenders, because he brings the teamwork keyword with Chewbacca, or actually Chewbacca's got the teamwork keyword, but you're going to get some synergies between the two of those units as far as getting some aims and some dodges. Along with that, you're going to get some excellent command cards from Han Solo, Sorry about the mess, reckless diversion, and change of plan. So for about 20 bucks, a great unit, give you another commander that you can leverage in your Echo Base Defenders list. Next up and staying in the commander unit area is the generic Rebel Officer. When you pick up the Rebel Officer in the Rebel Specialist Personnel Expansion Kit, which also gives you a Medroid, an Astromech, as well as the Rebel uh, uh, communications technician. So you're going to get a couple extra units within that one box. So you're not paying just the $20 to get just the officer. The rebel officer brings a low cost option to the commander unit at 45 points naked. And with a couple of keyword, good keywords would take cover and inspire. So to aim out some, hand out some aims as well as remove some pressure from, you know, in particular, maybe those rebel vets that are in the box. While also bringing additional command cards, you get sabotage communications for some order control. You get Turning the Tide for some Suppression Remediation and Covering Fire, which is a card to basically hand out some dodge tokens. So again, another good box set for $25, $20 if you can find it on sale, where you get the Rebel Officer as well as these med units and the comms technician. An augmenting unit that comes in the Echo Base Defenders box set, while one FD cannon is good, two is definitely better. And the FD cannons are just a great kind of low cost unit to add to the rebel to your rebel army because they throw a decent amount of dice. We're talking five black dice, range five with impact two, without any upgrades. If you equip the overcharge generator, you get it to add an additional black dice. So now six dice as well as impact three. And while they're stationary units, you with that range five and depending on objectives in the map, you can get some really good range control with these units again because of that distance as well as that needed impact if you're facing, you know, army or, you know, armies with armor keywords or the dark troopers uh, on the empire. So just a really good unit for that, you know, 65, 70 point cost. And one thing to think about is, while well, I said, you, you know, two is great, Echo Base Defenders does allow you to bring up to four support units. So in theory, you could bring four of these if you went out and bought that many. I'm not saying you should, but it is just an option. And speaking of support units and augmenting what came in the Echo Base Defenders box, we've got Tauntauns. So you, you get two units of Tauntauns in the Echo Base Defenders box. 
I would recommend if you can picking up two more boxes of Tauntauns to fill up that full four unit support, uh, support class. Now, the meta has moved away from the Tauntauns over the years, so I'm not sure how competitive bringing all those would be, but playing against Tauntauns and you know, your local LGS around your kitchen countertop or wherever you're playing is still a lot of fun. And having four of those or four units of those furry beasts going after your opponent with Relentless and a Speed 3 move can actually be pretty devastating if you can get those, you know, get those Tauntauns in melee combat. And for our final unit, you know, what Battle of Hoth remake would be incomplete without air speeders? Now, air speeders are obviously not included in the Echo Base Defenders box, um, but just like the FD cannons, you know, one is good, but if you can get two, that's going to be better. And of course, you can only have up to two heavy units in EBD anyways. But you get an armored vehicle, it's uh, speed three, three red, three black for its attack dice. And again, I mean, it's just a very thematic unit, you know, to bring to the table when you're talking about the Echo Base Defenders and the Battle of Hoth. And with using the speeders and these other units I recommended, you can definitely get a couple of different play styles out of that single box, right? You could go lean into the support or the heavies, excuse me, with the speeders and do a lot of rebel vets with your heroes, or you could lean more into the melee skew with those units of Tauntauns, or even kind of do a hybrid of either one of the Tauntauns or the speeders with the FD cannons and fill it out with those heroes, the ones included in the box or the ones that we've added, as well as all those rebel. Now, finally, just for completeness, one thing I will say is you can add uh, Luke Skywalker to an Echo Base Defenders list if you have the Commander Luke. Now, Commander Luke is only in the core box set, but they did release a limited edition Commander uh, Luke figure uh, that you could go, you could purchase. Now, I've only seen it on the secondary market nowadays on eBay for 50 bucks or so, but you can equip Commander Luke in Echo Base Defenders. So if you do have the core set, that is an option, but I'm basing this video off if you just have Echo Base Defenders and you're trying to grow from there. But again, just for completeness, I wanted to call it out and maybe beat somebody to the comments of, of mentioning uh, Luke Skywalker. So that wrap ups Echo Base Defenders. Now, if we go into the Galactic Civil War box set, that's a little bit more interesting because unfortunately the units, in my opinion, that come in that box set for the Rebels are not all that good. You get a couple of units of Rebel Troopers, which not very good. You get Commander Luke, which I just touched on, who's okay, but he's definitely not, I would say, a top tier force user, especially for the points outlay. And you get the Rebel ATRT, which you may or may not actually be using. So how do we take that you that box set kind of morph it into something a little bit more usable and again of course get it to that 800 points so that's why my first suggestion is going out and picking up one or two boxes of the rebel veterans and the reason for that is the rebel veterans are just a better core unit uh surge to hit being a key factor here compared to the rebel troopers as well as and you're going to see this a couple times you get two units in one box so you get the unit of rebel veterans but you also get an emplacement trooper so remembering with an 800 point army, you have to have three units of core. You could either use just the rebel vets with your two units of rebel troopers, or you could use the emplacement trooper and the vets and one unit of your rebel trooper. So you get, get a couple different play styles from there. Definitely pick up one. I would probably, if you can get two, and Kyle honestly, maybe not even ever use the actual rebel troopers uh, that came in the core set, but obviously, you know, your mileage may vary. And speaking of filling out your list, let's talk about the special forces options that I would suggest. And from there, I would look at picking up two or three boxes, if you can, again, of the Rebel Commandos. And this goes back to just what I talked about, the Rebel Vets, is another one of those boxes that gets you a two-for-one type deal for the units. So the Rebel Commandos can come in a four-unit, you know, base unit uh, squad where you can add the sniper so you can get up to, or a, a dent, Demolitionist, which gives you five minis in the unit. Or you can take the two-man strike team where you take, you know, basically a unit leader and sniper rifle. But either way, and that's a low-cost unit to add activations, basically, 
to your army. So getting some commandos in there, again, gets you that two for one, uh, two for one units, future proofing, you're going to want to have some uh, special forces units anyway. And I feel like right now that's kind of the best way or the best spend money. And similar to the echo based defenders, again, like the rebel vets, if, if I was dead next unit, I would go with an FD cannon. As you can see, I'm pretty pop, pretty much a fan of these FD cannons, again, just from the price dice they throw. So I won't rehash that too much, but if you can pick up one or two FD cannons, I definitely would do that as well for the Galactic Civil War set. And lastly, this one's really kind of, really three for one, is I would pick up Cassian Andor, who also comes with K2SO as an operative. So Cassian is the commander and you get K2 as an operative. And... Ahsoka Tanu, who of course, you know, Jedi fulcrum in the Rebels list, going to give you a better Jedi for the cost, comparatively speaking, to running Luke Skywalker again. Opinion. But if you go this route with some of the other units I mentioned, you can really build out a very strong and very good quote unquote hero hammer list with your Rebel forces. So, and why Cassian, right? So, Cassian, just a great unit, great commander, uh, good keywords. With the price change for his gun, he has a it's a config you know card, so you flip it up or what one side or the other, depending if you want to use the sniper rifle or his pistol. They changed the cost of that. That is now free. It used to be ten points, so that made him a better better you know commander. Along with that, he's got danger sense three, marksman one, technical one, and he has some decent command cards. And again, this is before you even get K two S O. Uh, added to the equation who gives you that teamwork car command or keyword so again if you have casting you're probably going to, want to take key two because you're going to get some extra benefit from there so he comes with calculate odds which is basically a way to generate aims dodges and suppressions he's incognito so nobody can shoot at him until he does a shot unless you get in within range one and like i said he does have the teamwork with cassian uh red saves five health two courage and he surges to crit so just a good operative unit and like I said, adding Ahsoka to the mix for this hero hammer list, uh, jump two, charge, defend one, deflect, immune pierce, uh, Jarkai mastery, which makes that are used dodge tokens to increase hit, uh, dice results. Six health, three courage, uh, red saves and surge to crit, you know, double rainbow lightsaber. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Just a great unit, great Jedi to bring to the rebel list. And she has some great command cards. I am no Jedi, which gives her Agile 1, as well as she can add white attack dice to her pool for each dodge token she has. So there's some synergy between her command cards and, you know, her Agile 1 and these other things, or Defend 1, excuse me, to give her these dodge tokens. Uh, she's got Swift Protector, which gives her Guardian 2. And while I didn't mention her in this list, if you play Sabrina Wren, she's got some team up teamwork cards there as well so with that that gives you really more than five options i kind of fibbed a little bit but that gives you four options for each of the echo based defenders as well as the galactic civil war core set to kind of grow and expand your rebel army and i actually think to make what comes in each of those boxes far more competitive um, and potentially a lot more fun to play but like I said, those are my thoughts. My, your miles may vary. If you have any thoughts or comments, please post them below. But until the next video, hail to the Empire.